Hey everybody, it's Pastor Stephen here with another episode of Ask Anything, where you get to submit your questions about the Bible, theology, or the Christian life, and in each video episode I spend a few minutes answering one of those questions. And today we've got a question that deals with the Bible, and specifically, which books were included in the Bible. Uh, you may remember that a couple of episodes ago, back in episode 16, I talked about the canon of Scripture, or the list of books that were uh, included in the Bible and what criteria was used for what books were included and what books were excluded. And today we have a question that's along those similar lines, but involves a little bit of a different topic. And here's the question that was submitted. It says, I'm curious why the Catholic Bible has more books than other Bibles. That's a good question. Some of you may know this, but if you have picked up a Bible that is a Catholic Bible, uh, you will notice that it contains more books, extra books, than are in most other standard Bibles. And these books are often referred to as the Apocrypha. And while these books are recognized by Catholics as part of Scripture, they are not recognized by Protestants as part of Holy Scripture. So we need to start by looking at a little bit of the background as to what the Apocrypha actually is. The word Apocrypha simply means hidden, and it's not entirely clear how that group of books that we refer to as the Apocrypha received that nickname of Apocrypha, but we do know that very early on in the early history of the church, even predating the church, that name was used, the Apocrypha to refer to this group of books. And when we use the word Apocrypha, uh, we are referring to a series of books. It's about 14 or 15 books, depending upon how you count them. And these were written between the time of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so for this reason, sometimes they're also referred to as the intertestamental literature because they are the uh, books that were written between the two testaments, which is why we call them intertestamental. Um, among these books, you will find a variety of types of literature. Uh, some of these books include historical literature. We have historical type books in our Bibles, like uh, the books of First uh, and Second Kings or First and Second Samuel that give history of the people of Israel. Well, there are some of the books in the Apocrypha that are historical as well, like First and Second Maccabees, which give the details, the historical details of the Jewish revolt against Antiochus Epiphanes in 167 BC. So some of the books included in the Apocrypha are historical. Some of the books in the Apocrypha are wisdom literature. We have wisdom literature in our Old Testament as well. Uh, books like Proverbs or Ecclesiastes are un understood to be wisdom literature. Well, there are some books in the Apocrypha that are also a similar category of wisdom literature. There's a book called The Wisdom of Solomon and a book called Ecclesiasticus, which is not to be confused with Ecclesiastes, which is in the standard Old Testament. Um, but some of these books fit that category of wisdom literature. There's also some of them that fit the category of apocalyptic literature. We have apocalyptic literature in our standard Bibles. Uh, the second half of Daniel and Revelation are often described as apocalyptic literature. And likewise, uh, there are some books in the Apocrypha that are apocalyptic literature in nature. So for instance, the book of Second Esdras is in there, and that is uh, apocalyptic literature. And then also you'll find in these books some that are what might be described as devotional literature. So for instance, there's a book called The Prayer of Manasseh, which is a sort of devotional type literature. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is this set of 14 or 15 books that is often called the Apocrypha includes a variety of different types of literature. Uh, there are historical books, there are wisdom books, there are apocalyptic books, there are devotional books. It's a mixture of different types of books. Now, what is their relationship then to the rest of the Bible? Well, we need to understand that during the time of Jesus and during the early church, these writings were not considered to be part of the Word of God. They were 
uh, utilized in the Jewish community. They were read in the Jewish community and even in many uh, cases considered to be useful and helpful. But they were not considered to be part of Holy Scripture. They were not considered to be on par with the rest of the books of the Bible. As time went on and as history progressed, much later in church history, there were some within the Roman Catholic Church that began to make the argument that these books should be included in the Bible and they were on the same level with the rest of Scripture. And it wasn't until actually 1546 at the Council of Trent that the Roman Catholic Church made the official declaration that these books that we refer to as the Apocrypha were to be included in the Bible. However, we should note that most Protestant churches, the Protestant reformers, strongly believed that these books should not be included in the canon. And they believed this for several reasons, and I'll just give you three reasons why the Protestants did not believe these books should be part of the canon of Scripture. First of all, no New Testament writer, most of whom were Jews, cites the Apocrypha as Scripture. There's not a single instance in the New Testament where one of the apostles or, or one of the writers of Scripture quotes the uh, Apocrypha and puts it on par with Scripture. Now that's very notable because we know that in the New Testament, the New Testament writers often quote other books of the Old Testament. They often quote from Psalms or Deuteronomy or the prophets and consider those to be Holy Scripture. And so you would think that if they also believed that these Apocrypha books were scripture, they would have been quoting from them. But we don't ever see them quoting from those books, which is an indication that they didn't believe those books were scripture. Secondly, the Jews prior to Jesus's day and in Jesus's day did not regard the Apocrypha as scripture. The, the Old Testament canon did not include these books in the early days as part of scripture because the Jews, while they did believe in many cases that these books were useful and helpful, did not include them or view them as scripture. And then a third thing we could add to that is that the early church, the early Christians, did not regard the Apocrypha as scripture. Uh, and therefore, it was not included when the New Testament canon was formed. So we don't see any one of the New Testament writers quoting the Apocrypha as scripture. The Jews in the early uh, days of the church and prior to the formation of the church did not regard these as scripture and the early Christians did not regard them as scripture. And so in conclusion, we could say that by not including the Apocrypha in the Bible, what the Protestant reformers were doing uh, was that they were following the example of the early church and even the Jewish people before the early church in recognizing that only the 39 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books of the New Testament that we have in most standard Bibles today, only those 66 books are considered to be the Word of God and Holy Scripture. A couple of final thoughts I'll just mention here. The Apocrypha, uh, these books are mentioned in the Westminster Confession of Faith, which in the Evangelical Presbyterian Church is our uh, theological creed, our doctrinal standard for our beliefs. And I want to just draw your attention to something that the Westminster Confession of Faith says. In chapter 1, section 3, it says, The books usually called the Apocrypha are not divinely inspired and are not part of the canon of Scripture. They therefore have no authority in the church of God and are not to be valued or used as anything other than human writings. That last sentence is very helpful because what it underscores is the fact that the Apocrypha are human writings. They are not the Word of God, but they are human writings. Now, this doesn't mean that they are not useful. There, is, there are lots of different human writings today and throughout history and lots of human literature that is very helpful to study. We often study great novels or we study works of history that are helpful in helping us to learn things and, and to grow. So 
to say something is human literature is not to say that it is bad, but it's simply to underscore that it is not on the same level as the Word of God or as Holy Scripture. The Westminster Confession makes clear what uh, the Reformers made clear, which is that these books are not on par with the rest of Scripture. And therefore, the Bible, uh, properly understood, includes only the 66 books of the Old and New Testaments. Only these books are inspired. Only these books are inerrant. Only these books are authoritative. And only these books are the Word of God itself. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you in understanding a little bit of the relationship of the Apocrypha to the rest of of the Bible. I encourage you as always to continue sending your questions to me. You can submit a question that you have by emailing it to me to askanything at highviewepc.org and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.